Thanks for tuning in to Mountain High Hockey. Today, we're gonna work on the saucer pass. Everybody loves the saucer pass. You probably do it way too much, but when it works out, your friends think you're a beaut. Today, to help us out, we've got Bremerhoffen's own Bennett. Bennett's back on break, where he plays hockey in Berlin, and he's been doing a little bit of skill stuff with us out on the ice and he's gonna help us out and chuck some sauce. When trying to throw a sauce pass, to get that puck up in the air at the perfect height and to land that puck flat is the most important thing. It looks great, but it's also very useful when there's a stick in the lane and you have to get across that stick and put the puck on your teammate's blade. But to do that, we have to know First of all, what type of blade we're using? Are we using a heel curve? Do we have a toe curve? Because we're gonna want to get the puck in the part of our blade that's curved that allows us to get the puck in the air. People always ask, how do I get the puck in the air and then have it sit flat? Where do I pass it from? Well, you have to understand where the curve of your stick is. Mine, I use a heel curve, so I'm gonna be saucing that pass, feeling my blade, and it's gonna be rotating towards the toe. If you have a toe curve, you'll probably start that puck in the toe of your stick, and then work it off the front of your blade, or if you have a mid curve, you'll get start the puck in the middle of your blade, and then work it toward the toe. So you have to find out where the curve is, and that's what's gonna help you get the rotation, get that puck in the air, and keep it flat. There's a few times in the game where the sauce pass is crucial to making a scoring chance or getting out of a zone. When we're on two on one and that stick or in the defenseman lays his stick down and we want to get that pass across because the goalie's taking away the strong side, it's a great time to use a sauce pass. Or if we're coming out of the corner and a D-man goes down, has his stick down, able to jump out, get that puck over that stick, to a slot opportunity for a scoring chance. Or maybe I'm driving down my off wing and puck's taken away and I want to get the puck to the guy driving down the slot is another great time to use it, okay? Now, it's a little bit fancy, but if it's in your bag of tricks and, you pat and you're working on it all the time and you feel comfortable, you should be able to use everything in your toolbox. So it's a great weapon to have and it'll help you offensively and be able to create scoring chances. The high flip, a perfect saucer to his brother, walks in and undresses Anderson. Sauce passing is something that you don't need a partner to help you practice. You can just lay a stick down and try and get over that stick and land it flat before it hits the boards. The other thing is a sauce pass doesn't have to be 80 feet wide, right? It doesn't have to be the whole length of the rink. Little sauce passes in tight are what really skilled players use as deception and be able to get over that stick to be able to create little scoring chances. So a lot of times sauce passes don't work because you're doing it the whole width of the rink when a little in tight, good hands play sauce pass is just as deadly. Thanks for tuning in to Mountain High Hockey. And remember, if you like the video, make sure you press the like button. If you're not already subscribed, subscribe. Tell your buddies, have them watch it, have them like it, have them subscribe, because remember, it's all about the details. <laughs>